वेलकम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक हमारा लीडर बोर्ड कहता है दैट आफ्टर द फर्स्ट थ्री गेम्स ऑफ द डे द योथाज आर लीडिंग विद एट पॉइंट्स एंड द शेर दिल्स हैव ओनली थ्री पॉइंट्स इट्स बीन अ नेक टू नेक बैटल सो फार लेकिन वाइल द डे स्टार्टेड ऑफ पॉजिटिवली फॉर द शेर दिल्स नाउ दे कैन ओनली होप टू टाई विद द योथाज इफ दे विन द नेक्स्ट गेम विच इज डोटा टू Welcome back to you Cypher. Yodas versus Sher Dil is about to get on the way. Yodas already diving into the draw. All right ladies and gentlemen, a big warm welcome back to the second episode of Radiance Turn to Bad. It's Yodas versus Sher Dil with me Cloudex and my co-cast of Vivek. What's up Vivek? I mean, uh, the Dennis are coming in this band. With the loss in Counter Strike Mikhail or Amar ka yehi sawal tha can they make a comeback in Dota and you guys are no pushovers there are a bunch of good players Here's the Radiant Fan captain in the form of Levin or Rishabh this if i'm not mistaken is their first game at uh, U Cypher and but you should see how it progresses so far the meta is heavy pretty international uh nice talk about ho chuka hai mujhe ye bhi lagta hai ki Lich ban hone wala hai yes Lich is ban of course Let's not forget who's the best player in the end. Dyer's bad now. Their former teammates, their team, the game's rhyme as well. It's a match made in heaven, and they've shown together that they are quite an interesting team. Yes. I'd be afraid if I was them. I agree, but Shedin has a lot of good players. Hey, Rival, Khans. Khans has been around for ages. Who happens to be the draft pick? If I'm not mistaken, he did play for one of the better teams in India, and. Uh, Rival, Khans, Khans has been around for ages. Who happens to be the draft pick? Uh, we're seeing a Venomans as well as a Nyx get uh, banned out here. The question is, how do you guys want to open? Um, you've got a bunch of options. You could just play something safe and pick up the Necrophos because it's really no required. More so, Necrophos is being dealt with. It, it's as simple Five as picking up a Nyx and then landing that Ice Blast. It's also as simple as ensuring that he doesn't get a good Dyer's start. Make sure that the Necrophos for doesn't have Ice. But look at this Earth Spirit. I I haven't seen this in a really long time in Indian Dota. They've got a they've got a ace up their sleeves here picking up that Earth Spirit. The fact that Earth Spirit was picked up with such confidence by them is actually hard. And honestly, Dyer's turn to face. Right, right, right. One of the strongest stealth in the meta. I agree. Uh, if if played well, uh, he is devastating. He he has a stun. He has um, undeniable, but pick. some form of initiation. He has silence. He has a good amount of team fight and magnetize. Speaking of team fight, should they get some of their own from the introduction? Not. The question is, are they looking for something like a void? Actually, hold on. They picked up the bat rider. It's going to probably be bat rider in the off lane. Um, I think Cherdins has done a good job. Give us the initiation and. Plus counter initiation here, ancient passion and bat rider really good view to start with. Ten um, seconds. Plus uh, ancient passion as in the counter for the necro first we had. So Five think, seconds remaining. I think bat rider fits in well. Good job. You guys will have to think about how they can counter the bat rider now. The best way to deal with the bat rider, you pick up something new, like a blast point, or you pick up something new to spell. Oracle is a good way to pick up. Radiance bat turn to bat. You could have the mix assassin, but unfortunately, you guys get put back for the mix assassin. और शेडिल ने और किल को बैन कर चुका है तो अगर योद्धास को मतलब कुछ फॉर्म ऑफ काउंटर इनिशिएशन और राधर अ काउंटर टू द बैट राइड चाहिए तो दे कैन गो फॉर समथिंग लाइक द लीजन कमांडर यू गॉट द प्रेस द अटैक व्हिच डिस्पेल्स द लैस हो लीजन वर्सेस बैट राइडर इट्स आई मीन इट्स Truly a test of the offlaners. We've seen this matchup multiple times. Uh, the last time I saw it, the bat rider did manage to kill the legion before the legion hit two. So it's very crucial as to who gets that range remaining. creep. Denying that range creep is going to be so crucial if it is a direct matchup between the bat rider and the legion commander in the same lane. Oracle getting banned out for obvious reasons. Uh, Wiper getting banned out because he's just a nuisance and nobody wants to play against him. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, yeah, Gandhi. Gondi used to play a lot of Viper, Seconds. and it seems as if Shadils know about this, and they're just going to ban out the Viper themselves. Five seconds uh, remaining. Well, you know, we've talked about this uh, Bat Rider versus Legion Commander matchup with some of the Asian esports superstars, and you know you're absolutely right when you say that it's a matchup that could go either way. Even though the Legion Commander is supposed to be one of the hard counters in the laning stage versus the Bat, at level one and level two, the Bat Rider has the option to pick up right. the Flame Break instead of the. Uh, Firefly, and that could score him a kill versus the Legion. Absolutely, 
And um, in, in such a matchup, would you prioritize getting press the attack early? You might consider it, but then the problem is uh, Batter Deck can basically come at you and right clicking you and, and start right clicking you with the with the uh, sticky nape palm early on. So you, while you will have the regen available, courtesy that uh, press the attack, you won't have any way to actually hit the Batter Rider back. Seconds. So the Batter Rider is more efficient at trading blows with you then. Mm -hmm. Five seconds but remaining. I mean, it is your only option. You probably do get the press the attack and you yeah. know, just make sure that you're farming with that press the attack if Absolutely. you're not trading hits. I've, I've even seen this matchup where, uh, despite a Legion commander starting out with a stick, uh, sometimes if you do manage to get a lot of stacks of sticky napalm, the bat rider can still run you over. Next pick for Shadows. Um, I presume they're looking for another support. Earthshaker's in the pool. Uh, provided the Earthshaker and the Ancient Apparition can work together with some synergy. You also got um, usual suspects such as the Slada. A clockwork wouldn't be too bad. Radiance turn uh, to pitch. Yeah, I, I do think Earth they're looking for that four position Roma. And yeah, it's going to be the Earth Shaker this time around. Though so it's not something that's been run as the four position too much of late because of how efficient he's in three position or in the off lane role. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not really against an Earth Shaker in the, in the four Ten position this seconds. game. Especially because it's the Earth Spirit on the side of Ryodhas that's going to be coming towards the middle lane. Earth Shaker is great at popping that stun at the most opportune moment and catching the Earth Spirit off guard and out of position under the tier 1 tower. Mm -hmm. He's sort of a defensive support for Shea Dins here. Yeah. One of the interesting things I've noticed is that we have missed the draft that Ryodhas are playing on the Radiant side. The Earth Spirit has the benefit of those added trees around the mid lane, so it's going to allow him to use that rolling boulder on the enemy mid laner and uh, catch him off guard. Yeah. Can the Earth Shaker keep up with the constant rotations coming up from Yodas in the mid lane? Uh, what's also interesting is Yodas have just uh, picked up their one position early on. They've gone for the Juggernaut and they're going to pick up another core in the form of the Temple Assassin. It's a little unusual to pick up your cores this early on. This early on as a Templar Assassin, I'd be worried. Although the Viper has been banned out by Sherdils, and Yodas might have been Ten thinking seconds. perhaps Sherdils are looking to get themselves the Templar Assassin themselves, which is why the ban comes Five out immediately. Seconds right. um, what is concerning though, is that the Bat Rider is already there on the side of Sherdils, and that's not a bad way at all to deal with the Templar Assassin. Mm -hmm. If Sherdils want to make life worse for Yodas, they could pick up the Ember Spirit and run him in the mid lane. Now, this is a matchup that could go either way mm -hmm. because the Flame Guard does burn through Refraction, but if TA maybe puts a point into Meld, Ember has less armor, so the physical damage hurts. Um, it, it's a matchup that goes either way, and they're going to go for the Ember Spirit. Take a bow, Vivek. You called it. It's I the Ember bow. Spirit on the fourth position, on the fourth pickup coming out from Sheldon's. So it is a matchup that goes either way, a matchup that's made a little easier because of the Earth Shaker with that stun versus the TA. If you can block her out, prevent her from making that escape path back up onto a high ground, you can burn her refraction charges and eventually burn her down as well. You are going to need a sentry ward in the lane. Ember Spirit is definitely going to need to have that vision when she goes into the meld so that he can searing chains her up and hold her in position and burn her down to a crisp. Um, problem is, on the other side as well, if the Earth Spirit comes in with a slow, from the rolling boulder, follows it up with a smash and a silence. Templar is going to make mince meat out of him. Yeah. I also wanted to point out that um, the Earth Spirit, I mean, if he's hanging around the mid lane, he has a much easier time connecting those rolling boulders versus melee heroes. It's much easier to read them when they're near the creep wave. And I presume he should be connecting them a fair amount in the mid lane. Uh, next pick for Yodas is going to be the Sand King. I'm presuming this is going to be an off lane Sand King. Yeah, I think it's going to be an offlane Sand King as well, but how do you think he's going to fare versus an A and an Earth Shaker? It's not going to be fun. It's also very likely that we've read this wrong, right? It could be a one position Ember Spirit going towards the safe lane. And then they're still going to look for a middle laner that can deal with the Templar Assassin. Um, Invoker's in the pool. The DA does have the upper hand in that matchup, but I think Invoker could be fine in the overall scheme of things. There's also the possibility that, uh, well, they pick up something like a Dragon Knight, maybe? Or an Alchemist, for that matter, if they want to play greedy. On the side of Shadows? Yeah. I think they're going to run uh, the Ember Spirit in the mid lane. I, I mean, I'm not opposed to one position Ember Spirit. The problem is, Ember needs those levels Five as soon as possible. Remaining. How about Tinker, though, at the mid? Then I think the Ember makes sense on the safe lane. For Shadows? Yeah. I mean, Tinker's good versus the Templar Assassin. March of the Machines is 
you know, it's a very, very easy way to take down those refraction charges. And with the march, of course, the lane also, you can push it in the middle lane, mein. you can manage to get yourself uh, okay. the runes every two minutes. Now, one thing I want to do you think this is an offlane sand kick? I think so. I think it's an you think so? King, yeah. But you know what I'm surprised about? If it is an often sand king, why would you ban out Melikos? Because uh, I mean that's one of the in my opinion, that's the strongest strength of an offlane sand king that he excels versus Melikos. And you really have to look at the enemy offlane before you do pick up a sand king. Right now he's gonna have a really hard time, like you mentioned, with the A and the Earthshaker. You would actually want to possibly leave those Melikos in. It's possible that 11 things that the Sven and the Chaos Knight do well. Uh, versus uh, the Juggernaut, which they do. The, the Sven with his eye armor can do well in the early stages versus the Juggernaut. But I'm, I'm really Dyer's not sure what's Yoda's train of thought with these bands. I'm not convinced by Yoda's train of thought either. Um, they've opted to pick up a Juggernaut in a lineup where he may not have uh, you know, the most utility. I feel like the Juggernaut is a carry that only works in certain situations. You have to set him up nicely. You have to make sure that you've got a pushing lineup behind him. Seconds. One that can go Siege Towers with the Blade Fury to hit the buildings. Healing Ward is not going to be that much of a factor remaining. because Ancient Apparitions on the other side. What's yeah. the Juggernaut really bringing to the table here? Absolutely. Especially when, uh, you know, your lockdowns are not the most reliable with the Earth Spirit and to an extent the Sand King as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I mean, this is something we discussed yesterday during Yaksha's game as well. Uh, we get the sense that in the drafting phase, players are like, Arey, yaar, mujhe ye de de, yaar, 11, mujhe ye khelne aata, yaar, please yehi pick kar mein de. And uh, maybe we're seeing a bit of that uh, see through to day two at the U Cipher. Uh, Shadil's last pick, I'm going to call a safe lane. Uh, uh, you could do Life Stealer, you could do. I, I mean, you want that infest bomb, so the life seal is definitely yeah. a good option. I mean, here. if they want to do uh, alternatively, if they're running a safe lane ember, I'd be really convinced that they picked up the Tinker right now. Okay, I'm pretty convinced it's a mid ember. Monkey King. All right, monkey. Yeah. So Jai Bajrangbali. <laughs> Didn't see this one coming through. But honestly, last pick Monkey King is not bad at all. The damage over time department taken care of by the Ember and the Bat Rider, the physical damage now taken care of by Rival on that Monkey King. It's a good lineup. Can't really fault it. Lots of stuns, lots of lockdowns. Not too many ways to break buildings though. That's the, I'd say, the policy or the chink in Sherdil's armor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're gonna have a hard time taking down structures. Uh, to some extent, uh, though, the team fight is strong. The team fight is really strong. Uh, the lanes, I I don't know how Sand King's going to fare. He's going to walk into lane, take a couple of stacks of Jingu, and he's going to be forced to back off. It's not going to be a fun game for Kale on the Sand King. Ten seconds. Yeah, I think Kale's uh, in for a bumpy ride here in that in that off lane. He's most likely going to have to just get that Iron Talon and go into the jungle, if nothing else, early on. Mm -hmm. But uh, Yodhas, I think they can. Uh, they, their real strength lies in the mid game stage. If at all that Sand King gets a good game off, Agar, you can pull out an early blink dagger. They're going to have great initiation potential. Their pickoff potential is massive as well with 11 on the disruptor. 11, I mean, you and I have seen him in the golden age of Indian Dota. Um, his captaincy cannot be questioned. He's yeah. really an experienced player and, you know, Joseph Bale on his side, I don't think they're completely unjustified. He has played a lot of Dota and seen a lot of high-tier Indian Dota as well. So Absolutely. I, I kind of believe that he's going to be able to captain this team to victory. We'll have to wait and see whether or not Sherdils can prove us wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, with the game getting underway, both teams cheering on their fellow teammates here. Let's do a quick customary introduction then, shall we Vivek? Absolutely, I'm going to start out with the Radiant uh, for the side of the Yodas. We got Gandhi playing the Temporal Assassin, 11 or Rishabh going to be playing the Disruptor, Kel on the Sand King who might possibly have a hard time in the offlane, Deja Vu going to be playing the Earth Spirit and uh, Gandhi's fellow teammate Sean D playing the Juggernaut. Meanwhile on the other side it is Team Sherdils, you've got uh, M or Mama Sita as we know him playing that Ember Spirit, it's going to be Earthshaker in the hands of Disruption. You've got uh, Monkey King, who's cosplaying as a courier on that, uh, well, rather that's being played by Rival. You've got Khans on the Batrider, and that'll put Ancient Apparitions, Ancient Apparitions, sorry, in the hands of Opa. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds to battle. 
early uh, sentry coming up from the radiant in the mid lane. I'm not really sure if they did manage to get the D ward off. Uh, actually, that's very easy to tell. Is it, yeah, 11. No, he's not gone. Did he give it to the TA? I don't not think really they... sure. Just checking if anybody has a bonus 100 gold with them. Nope. No D ward for them. No D wards because there's actually no wards left to be planted on the side of the tire. At last. One observer ward, but I think they might have actually left the other observer ward in the stash. Um, yeah, let's quickly take a look at uh, the side of uh, Shed and then not the other observer. Well, they have a secondary courier going for them in the top lane. <laughs> Alright, Monkey King, body blocking the creeps. It is well established that it's a safe lane, Monkey King, now in a mid ember spirit. Gandhi. It's a, this is the matchup that goes either way. Monkey, uh, sorry, Mama Sita could take the win here in this lane, but not with Deja Vu coming in early like this. Orb of Venom hits, auto attacks, refraction not available, but Cyber Blades damage kicking in. We're already going to have to see him pop that salve early on. Well, except for the fact that he's choosing, he doesn't actually have a salve. He chose to commit with uh, that uh, consumed tango. He's trying to rush into the four-man team. Another rolling roll from Deja Vu. A lot of pressure early on. What's surprising is how horrible the block is coming out from Sheldon in the top lane. Cal has the creeps all the way near him and he's able to approach them. Not really sure what the Earthshaker is doing. Now he's making way towards the mid lane. Gotti needs to be careful. He's got the thing down, the pressure. Not entirely effective, but here comes the rolling boulder. It's a bloodbath in the mid lane and Deja Vu's overstep this bounce. The flame guard's worn off. Disruption doesn't have a pressure for the while. They're going to run him down and disruption with that guy. Oh! Look at the new even joins in on the action. Ancient Deny coming out of Earth Spirit while he does get that extended respawn timer upon him. He does manage to deny gold and EXP. First Blood still up for grabs. And we might just see it taking place somewhere on the bottom lane. 11. He's expended all of his mana to try and zone out Kanze, but Khan still has two tangos to work with. For now, neither side taking a commanding lead just yet. Juggernaut is farming well on one side of the map, while the Batrider is not doing too badly either. He's at level 2 and he has a creep wave right next to him, while the Sand King got zoned out of his lane. He did go back to pick up a bounty, but at mid again, a Fisher was dropped to no avail this time. Disruption is just going to pick up a regen rune. However, Mama Sita would have loved to get that himself. Jesus. One second, bot lane. Three range creeps? I, the, the equilibrium is all messed up and 11 is trying to make up for it. But main first blood, it's uh, Shev that gets the kill. Deja Vu was too far in. This is that. This is the problem with the Earth Shaker being on the other side when you're an Earth Spirit. If you miss your rolling boulder, he's gonna smack you with a fissure, block you out of position and score that kill. Shev does, off to a good start here. And it's even better because M or rather Mamacita picks up the kill himself. No glimpse though. He's gone into the rolling boulder. He gets the glimpse now. He was holding on to the skill point. 11 with the smart plays coming out. They might just be able to get the skill on Khans, but his boots and his firefly will allow him to get in and deny himself in neutral as well. Gandhi still farming in the middle lane. He hasn't died just yet. He's at 17 CS and uh, he's keeping, he's staying far ahead of the Ember Spirit, in fact, he is dominating this lane. Even though the Ember Spirit got first blood, the net worth charts are still in favour of Gandhi. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this is Deja Vu and the impact he's had on the mid lane. It's just been a general nuisance. And the problem for Sheridan is that neither yes. support has failed to secure any lane for them. I mean, Kael is still getting a lot more than he should be at the off lane. Sand King, he's got boots and a BMS, he's going to keep coming into lane, being a nuisance. While this earth shaker is just roaming around like a headless chicken from lane to lane, not accomplishing anything other than that one kill though. 
it's also a rather difficult proposition for the Monkey King, right? Because, like you said, the Earthshaker is moving mid time and again. Not just that, the Ancient Apparition is following him as well. Right. Which means that the Sand King can do what he does best versus melee heroes in the lane. And he can just sit around here. But the problem is he doesn't have a single point in Sandstorm. Which means that Rival could get that fourth stack of Jingo Mastery upon him. But he misses with the Barrel Strike. Rival, this could be a kill for him. He has the Boundless Strike. All he's going to do is line it up and smack him with him with the cold feet on top. Bye bye, Kale. He's going to meet his Maker. Rival's going to get that kill, putting Shared Bills in the lead so once again. I, I, I kind of understand. Okay, mid lane is gone. Lane is trying to get the whole time. It's not the Yahoo. Again. Again, up denies himself, and right now the neutral creeps have as many skills as the heroes of this. You know, there should have been seven kills on the scoreboard, but unfortunately, three of those kills have gone in favor of neutrals. Hence, the scoreboard stands at four and zero in favor of shared bills. Two out of three of those denies were were coming out on the dire side. So shared bills are, are the ones in the driver's seat here, without a doubt. The fact that the bat gets a solo kill and dies without giving up any EXP or gold in that offlane, it is ever so crucial. Absolutely. It's a huge win-win for them. And uh, five minutes in, Sheldon's tough lead ke saath, uh, game ki momentum dictate kar rahe hai And uh, really, there's nothing that uh, Yoda's are doing this early on. I mean, the Earth Spirit seems fine, but he hasn't accomplished too much just yet. Mm -hmm. That could be a little frustrating. He's only 11 to 6 minutes in. Big lane, no. I mean, if I was on the side of uh, Yodas this time around, I'd probably say, boys, Calm down, let's get, our, let's get our early items online, let's just survive for the first few minutes of this game and come out strong when Gandhi's got himself some items. Let's stack some Ancients, stack some Creeps, that should be the game plan here, but instead they're trying to counter gang because at middle lane, M, he's going in, the Barrow Strike is there, but the Fisher was there, even better. Deja Vu's coming in, gets the boulder smash off, but is it too late? Because Mama Sita is ripping them a new one, taking down Gandhi with a double damage rune activated, and Evan is being run down and gets brought down by Khans. Deja Vu has been chased as well, it will be four down on the side of the radiant and nobody dies for sure this. This time around the neutral feet feel a little neglected but that was excellent coming up from Shadil. Top lane and this is Kale just being a nuisance. Meanwhile, Deja Vu, he's gone in on Disruption, but Disruption, he's got his backup coming in as well, with Khans in the vicinity. Eleven will drop down that Kinetic Field as a defensive measure. Deja Vu is going to have to go back up where Mamacitas are waiting, but that DD rune still active. They get the kill on him, Khans is going to get the money, and now with the slows coming out from that sticky napalm, I don't think Eleven is going home for supper either. He's got the Kinetic Field dropped down, but they do have five stacks of sticky napalm, and here we go. The Firefly is going to burn into the crisp. Eleven, six stacks of sticky napalm, and he goes down finally. Shandu's coming in to try and do what he can, but Khans is just going to juke him left, right and center, hiding behind the pillar. Shandu's not going to find him, and Khans will survive. Shandu gives up. This hurts your dog. I mean, amongst 11 kills, they found only one kill in exchange for all of this. That's terrible. And, I mean, I don't know how they recover. They aren't doing too well in terms of network. The Ember Spirit jumped up ahead. The only one who seems to be having some sort of a decent game is Sandy. But is he really having a decent game? I mean, I he's mean, at 1500 net worth. He's at 1500 net worth. He's level 4, while the Monkey King is at level 7 in the lane against him. Anyway, Sean D. He did commit the Omni Slash somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where, but. It wasn't much avail. They've only got one kill on the board on the side of Yodas for now. And they are in troubled waters. Well, I mean, I'm really not disagreeing with what's going on in the dugout. They're saying, Ghar mein ja ke mara, gus gus ke mara. And really, the shared hills are absolutely decimating Yodas right now. It's not over. Look at what's happening in the middle lane. Yoda's 
That's four down across the map again. Shared deals. They've caught them by the skin of their teeth and they're crushing them now, left, right and centre. Rival, he's just getting out of control and so too is Mama Sita. I'm worried for Yodas here. Their opening Dota match of the season of U of the first season of U Cipher doesn't seem to be going too well for them. They've been squashed in the early game. The best they could do is deny a tower on that top side. You can say that. This is actually quite mediocre farming and she's also holding up the level. She's only level 7 at 10 minutes in. I mean, if you're to support your hoping to hit level 6 by the 10 minute mark, and by the standards, the DA is really under farmed at under level. Right now, all you guys have to do is fall back into the jungle, find some form, some form of recovery, find levels in EHP somewhere, and hope that the share will mess up. That's really the only way forward here. They've got a bank on Sherville's to make mistakes. Because honestly, this is one of those games where it's out of their hands. In Kehat Mene game be. They've got to hope that Sherville's are the ones that make mistakes and then if they're in the right position they can punish it hard. But this is also where Captain C really plays an important role. Eleven, he has to don the captain's hat. He has to say, boys, calm down. We got this. We can still take this. Wait for them to come high ground. We will punish them when they come up there. Because honestly, they have a lot of stuns. They have the Earth Spirit who's really good at controlling team fights. When the epicenter comes online, that's a lot of magic damage that's going to come out in the AoE. The only real worry factor here for... Uh, for the side of uh, Yodas is that they're not doing enough physical damage. And that's not going to come online until Templar gets a BKB. Yeah, and that, I mean, I said BKB, but that's not going to come online until Gondi gets his Desolator, which is what he's queued up. 11 minutes in, he has no sign of a Deso. Shondi's taken a beating, he has the Omni Slash and commits it, but there goes the Ember Spirit, making a break for it. Shondi. His Omni Slash was wasted. The captain in the street, surrounded by his enemies. But he is at the rescue, hope to get the epicenter off. But the Echo Slam not only got in the kill on the Disruptor, it also can see the epicenter. And now with the Wukong's command, they're moving for more rivals. Jumps off the trees, the Fisher is there. It's a double kill for Disruption. And Deja Wu can only watch. He's going to smash the Infinite. And rival just bounces away from 3 degrees. A bounce strike onto the Earth Queen and one quick slap with the staff of his secures the kill of the Earth Spirit. Right now, Yodas are being decimated. They're losing the tower in the mid lane and they're possibly losing all hopes of making a comeback here. I mean, Rival just triggered my PTSD from my Hindi my high school Hindi teacher, man. Those chamaks really hurt. He's destroying them one by one, slapping them on the back of their heads. And, and really, it's working well for them. 18 and 1. I don't think I've seen this much of a decimation in a long time now. I, I don't see it in my pubs either. I mean, this, is, this is painful. Uh, 12 minutes in, a 7,000 net worth lead. If I was here with us, what I'd hope to be telling my boys is, guys, let's just wait. Our first target should be to hit level 6. I mean, 11 means that static stuff. Earth Spirit means that magnetize. They're still not level 6. And maybe after the hit 6, it could possibly win the team fight. But look at this, man. There's a Blink Dagger available on Khans. He's a really over-leveled bat rider as well. Um, Monkey King is not getting any weaker. He chose to go for the hood, though. This could come back to bite him. He doesn't have a hood available, but look at me! 11 is gonna get caught with that lasso. Mama Sita's gonna come back and 11 will die once more. This feels like they're tilting, man. It just feels like they're tilting. 11 should not have been out there farming by himself with no vision whatsoever. Do you think the sword on the Monkey King is a good choice? Uh, actually, Cloudy Kundi, I'd say Monkey King first item. I mean, there's a lot of magical damage in Yodas lineup. But really, does he need the Monkey King? Uh, does he need the hood? Is it too defensive? It seems a little defensive, but in this particular game, you know, because the Templar Assassin and the Juggernaut, technically they're not doing anything at this point. That's not sugarcoating. They're, yeah. they're not really adding any value to the team fights. Shondi's real damage output is in the form of the Blade Fury, and, and I mean, with the hood, Blade Fury is not going to be too much of a factor as well. I think it's all right. It's already. I, I can kind of get behind the hood. He's going for the uh, sorry the uh, Echo Saber next, which is the standard build up. Yeah, that's standard. That, that's really gonna hurt. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, Hood ke Babaji is still doing a lot of physical damage as uh -huh. we saw him doing earlier on. Rival is 
Sorry, he's not falling behind at all. Shingo and Bowglis. In the H stage, what's that damage? Cause that there's nothing you can do to escape it. I mean, you're just hoping for the most. And it's it, it's also quite back. evident that Rival ne apna homework kar liya. He knows how to play this Monkey King. If you noticed, he chose to use that uh, mischief earlier on under the tower. It wasn't just to taunt opponents, it wasn't to mess around. It was to de to basically deter the tower from switching aggro over towards him. The tower doesn't attack this guy's creeps on the floor. Absolutely. Top lane though. It's a push of desperation coming up from Yuzhan. He's turning the front line. It's a little obvious what's going on. Oh, oh. Yeah, gosh, lad. It's on to Shami. An immediate side stop. A bonus strike is done. He has not stopped flying through. They're going to lose disruption. The epicenter will ensure that Khan will fall as well. And Yuzhan's a bonus strike. And then looking for more, Rival jumps up the trees. 11 is just going to keep the out of there, and Gonzi is going to go to save. It's a 2 for 2 exchange, but finally Yoda's opened up the scoreboard. And Deja Vu even sneaks in, takes the tower, and TP's out. Yoda's are back into this one, and they're getting there slowly. One, two, four, seven gold changes hand over there. So Yodas does manage to get themselves a bit of a recovery, although it was sad that they had to lose the juggernaut for it. Nonetheless, the Templar Assassin wasn't there. Gandhi is continuing to farm on the other side. Or slowly, slowly he is gonna get towards the desolator. But look at this man, the ember. No fear whatsoever. He's going for the solo kill on Gandhi, and he might just get it here. Meanwhile, I mean Gandhi is cosplaying as Mr. India here, but that's not really gonna help him. Lana Sita is coming in to finish the job on him once more, and Gandhi again. You hit that iconic score point by the way. It's 3 2 2 right now in favor of the Dyer. So, Shave Bills. Representing Filipino Dota by the looks I of mean, it. For those of us who haven't watched too much international Dota, could you give us a quick recap as to what 3 to 2 is all I, about? I think it's best people just Google it, man. Okay. It's 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 not my place to do justice to the 3 2 2 meme. It's match fixing. It's one word. <laughs> anyway, Shandi. He's got himself uh, the Yasha finished up. So there is some mobility coming out on the side of uh, Yodas now in the, on the battlefield. But they've lost the tower in the bottom lane. This is more room for Shale Dills to maneuver. And more space for them to go looking for ganks. Mm -hmm. Shadows, uh, with this net worth advantage, I'm really hoping that they get as many of these out, out of the house as possible. And uh, their, their work's going to be cut out for them. Going high ground is not going to be easy. They really do not have anyone who exits the big towers. Uh, maybe the monkey king once he picks up a desolator, but that's a little. I think it's not coming anytime soon. Uh, but yes, have you been sent channels with the advantage, with the momentum? What are the item choices here that could change the fate of battle here for Yodhas? Gondi with the Desso, I guess, could oh, add some value. I mean, you think of item choices, a Fisher and a Bounder Strike with the Lasso will ensure that Kale goes down in the top lane. You said item choices, I immediately clicked on the Sand King trying to check as to when his Blink Dagger was coming up. But yeah, it, it's only going to get delayed even more. Just sitting at me in the door. Well, Deja Vu might be walking in towards the top tier 2 tower where the rest of uh, Shade Dills are trying to push. We've got one hero that is Mama Sita sticking around in the middle lane. He doesn't have a defensive remnant drop down. In fact, he's got only one remnant charge which he's going to use offensively to root up 11 who now is going to go down to disruption. Beautiful stuff coming out from them. Very smart plays, just going back and forth into battle, making sure that they get the kills. Man wipe. 18 minutes in, the only casualty a monkey king who took an absurdly long time to go down. Shavers, they're just delivering the finishing blow by every passing second. 
I, I did not see this coming. I really did not see this coming from your does. I really thought they'd have a lot more up their sleeves, but they're just getting decimated bit by bit. I want to see what Shirdins has up their sleeves going forward into this tournament as well. But for now, I think it's safe to say that they're in the driver's seat and are close to claiming their first victory. Beautiful stuff coming out from Disruption, by the way, jumping in with that two-man Echo Slam, yeah. finishing off two heroes in a jiffy. And, I mean, they're playing it smart. It's just mechanical skill that's coming out from Shazdils. We saw the Flame Break coming out from the Batrider just before he got glimpsed back away to, uh, well, to the backlines, and that allowed the Ember Spirit to come in with the Searing Chains to follow it up. Beautiful coordination coming out from this team. Yeah, beautiful stuff coming out. level six. Uh, of most of the key heroes are on the side of Yoda's, but they haven't managed to do too much with it. The network craft absolutely can take like, Look at oh. this, Mama Sita. He's gonna find that one searing chains off. There's an ice blast coming through as well. It's not gonna connect on anyone this time around. I mean, this is when Mama Sita is just. I mean, he's strapping on a pair and going in man mode here. He was out there by himself, alone, with no defensive... Okay, never mind, he actually had a defensive remnant, but... Either way, there's so many stuns and lockdowns on the side of uh, Yodas that they could have caught him and killed him if he wasn't careful. There's stun and lockdown, but he feels the sense of confidence because there's no real fallout damage. You have to still, however, respect the static storm coming up from the uh oh, Shandi. He's been spotted. They can bound this strike into a searing chains and kill him off. They didn't get the searing chains, but they're gonna go in now for the auto attack. Will they kill him? The jungle master is stacked him. What? <laughs> Opa! That's not how you use the ice blast, man. He actually missed it. Yeah. That is uh, playing this game is just spiraling out of control bit by bit here I mean, I'm really surprised that Yodas are still in this. They should probably just consider tapping out because Shiddles knows that this is theirs. Sand King stunned up, stunned up twice. Jingo Mashi stacks stacking up. Ice Blast is gonna miss, but here comes the Searing Chain. Sally Storm dropped, they've caught out too. The Kinetic Field is there as well, and it looks like Mama Sita could be on the verge of losing his Beyond Godlike, like, and indeed he does end up going down. That's 1000 gold over to Gandhi. 11 will pay the price for it. It's three down on the side of, of Yodas, while Shade Bills are still on the hunt. Deja Vu drops the boulder smash, gets the kill onto the Sand King, or if it gets the kill onto the Earth Shaker, while Gandhi's in trouble now. He's trying to man fight his way through this. Rival is the one in trouble and he ends up going down as well and for all intents and purposes it is a comeback I, I, I don't know you call it comeback should be miss the feeding game back. that was an absolute throw of epic the push is coming up that look at where they were they were in that pace come on they, they do have an advantage but it's so easy to throw away your advantage if, if you don't use the spells correctly they went for that fight without the echo slam and they got punished for it Khan's though I mean I don't know, he's bullying, bullying 11 at this point. He just hurts for 11 to bring anywhere on the map. This is a battle slowing him down and making life a general nuisance for him. That was just disrespecting the potential of this disruptor with that static storm and kinetic field. The moment they locked down that ember spirit was the moment their seat was their fate was sealed and the Earth Shaker, unable to get out of that uh, static storm himself, ends up dropping alongside Mamacita. And then, to make matters worse, you had a Monkey King jumping into the base, right next to the enemy shrine, where the Templar Assassin was waiting with a Desolator. Bad decisions across the board from Sheridan's. Yoda's sparing no expense to punish them. I want to see Yoda's if you guys try now, it can actually cost them quite a bit. I'd like to actually see them group up and contest as a unit. They do have that trap in the Rosh pit. The trap was taken down by the sentry. But they did have vision that Shadens were moving. This is not a lineup. This is really not a lineup where Shadens can take down Roshan easily either. Yeah. I mean, the Monkey King's built defensively for the most part. He's not the best at taking down Rosh, not the best at claiming that Aegis early on. And it's also tying into our early analogy of how they don't have anything to break buildings and towers either. Yeah. There, there is uh, no reliable physical uh, no damage coming up to the side of Shadow. And they're being punished for the 
getting close and close into the detonator, that's the key item that makes all the different fresh items that they each side go high down. So does the what is the plan? They have no in the rot. This has been a game, a 24 minute game that I've not even seen Yoda's pop a single smoke. Yeah, I haven't seen them pop a single smoke this game at all, honestly. But, uh, I mean, they should have considered slowing down Roshan, if not contesting outside. Oh, Deja Vu, they caught him with the lasso. This could be a kill. He's going to make them work for it. He could turn around with the boulder smash, but look at how slow he is. Can't, nothing to cancel the DP, not going to overcommit. But that is the lasso committed. It doesn't However, matter though, it's space created for the Rosh, yeah, it's, uh, it's they get to Aegis. The Rosh, they've got Aegis and Rival, Rival uh, getting closer and closer to that Desolator, shot by uh, nearly five gold. So, to put it in layman's terms, an Aegis is basically a one-up. Yeah, it's a one-up. It's technically a one-up, it gives you an extra life, which means if Rival, the Monkey King who's holding on to this Aegis, dies, he will respawn in the exact same spot once again with full HP and full mana. So it's hard enough to kill him once, killing him twice is next to impossible at this point. But uh, you know, they did get a few new items after that last engagement. The Sand King is really close to that Blink Dagger. Eleven is waiting on the bottom lane to try and make a play happen as well. While Shondi is split pushing the bottom lane with his Manta style. However, the middle lane, it's in jeopardy because Shadrins are now coming knocking on the tier 2 tower. And it's only a matter of time before they go high ground. Yodas are trying to find a trade up for tier 1 for a tier 1 to a 3. Not sure if this is a bad trade. Monkey Queen. Well, it's definitely going to be a bit of a trade. But they're pretty much going to ban up the trade and close Yodas to look for a fight. No real effective. Yodas now. Ice Blast on the Yodas. He wants to go in. He's allowed to even the move on command. With the vision that they've got. He's allowed to even the move on command. 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 To be forced to pop blatantly in the run away, 11 walks into the room for the run and to immediately put back another set of theory trees up the game. He's a punch time, but his tower gets none of that love and with the speed creep and he went to it, but no one made the speed creep attack coming up the stairs and this should be a tier 3. A bounce attack on 11, Rival jumps onto the team, dumps him off, but he's in pain! He's controlled by the bounce attack and John D with the blade where he's forced to the market game. They take away the agency, high class comes by to Mama Sita trying to distract him, keep them busy. 11 tagged by the high class, might actually stick down to it. A boulder smash in the mid lane, but they've lost the tier 3. And Rival is going to make a run for it. 11 finally picks down to the high class. And it seems as if Shedden's got everything that they wanted. They got a tier 3. And the echo snap from the on shaver. A free shot on the new. And with the boundary strike, that's a quick double kill for Shedden. They're moving on to the paddocks. Only two members stand from the side of Yoda's. A buyback from the standing. And from Sunny Tong. He's keeping the three of the fight of the journey chain. The ban is being focused. Disruption doing his best with the enchant on him. Breaking up the process. A side clap comes up from the DA. Gale still searching for that blink tag. 27 minutes into the game. I'm, I don't even know why they haven't called it yet. This is just Sheridan's walking all over them. They're making, they're really making fun of their opponents right now. This is disrespecting Yoda's. It's time to tap out. Honestly, I think, I think they've met their match in this particular game. What they should be doing is going back to the drawing board, reading their opponent's playstyles because they will face them later on in the tournament once more. If they pull off a comeback here, it's from the depths of hell, honestly, because they've been decimated and smashed left, right and center. 27 minutes in, they've only got 7 kills, their opponents have 39 kills and they've got a 22,000 net worth lead going in their favor. I don't think it gets much worse than this for, for Yodas. And all the while you've got Mama Sita just <laughs> pushing the bottom lane and he's got his defensive items online now as well so the use Link, mm -hmm. way hard to bring down the Ember Spirit. I mean it's going to take a static storm and um, a and a boulder bit. smash on top of it to ensure that you get the kill. I mean, honestly, if you don't stun him, he's going to use up and dodge the damage. Yeah. You've got to ensure he doesn't have a remnant. You've got to ensure that he's keeping control for the duration of the static farm. And that the TA is doing a whole lot of physical damage on top. The TA has managed to get uh, the blink as well as the desolator. So if there is a reasonable amount of lockdown and control, she could bring down the supports at the base. The urchin and the apparition 
Meanwhile, you have a smoke coming out from the dire shield. This is the one looking to close out this game now with a pick off into an objective. This could be the Hail Mary, the last hurrah coming out from Yodhas. If they can take a fight here, they might buy themselves another 10 minutes into this game, else it's going to be all she wrote for them. Wards being dropped defensively and offensively. They're going to get a saving change off. The last throw is there. There was a preemptively pop made fury there from Sean Lee, but he is going to end up surviving for now. The BKB from Khans has been expended as well, who's now taken a beating from the Templar Assassin, who's been caught by the saving change. No BKB for her. No one dies just yet, but that changes as M jumps in and scores the kill, but Mama Sita is down. 60 seconds without the Ember Spirit. Disruption goes into the Echo Slam and Shandi with another Blade Fury manages to make a break for it. No additional buildings have been broken just yet. Disruption is doing what he can to break a tier 3 tower, but share those. They should consider backing off of here because they just lost Mamacita and he has no buyback. They died all the way into a tier 4 tower and for what? Only to lose the Ember Spirit? One kill was worth 2000 gold there. This is how bad it gets when you start throwing this late into the game. Yeah, and all that gold, um, who is end up going to Shandi? He's clearly going to have to start on the Juggernaut. Not really sure what's going to be the most special item. I'd like the Defeasal Blade because it takes away the Flame Guard if nothing else. And uh, then the Ember Spirit is a lot more susceptible to the damage coming out from both Shandi as well as a lot of the damage that is coming out of the Anyway, they smoked up on the side of Yodas. They feel that it's the turning to overcommit as they are listening and get carried away in each of the moments that they can find the team fight and find some recovery in this game. Right now, though, the only one who's anywhere near them is an ancient apparition. And I'm not sure if he's worth too much. He's also got that glimmer cape, which is not going to be an easy kill. Rival on the other side of the map is going to take down shrines. Yep, shrines are going to be dropping on one side of the map and unfortunately even an ancient apparition won't be brought down on the back of a smoke rotation. This is not looking good for Yodas but it's still looking better than it was a couple of minutes ago. They didn't lose their barracks in the last push and they did manage to get that kill on the Ember Spirit as pointed out. BKB is coming online for Gondi shortly and on the other side Diffuser Blade should be online for Shondi as well. Their physical damage is starting to rack up now yeah. and as time progresses I feel like the ultra late game phase will lie in favour of Yodas. It suddenly feels like Shirdzins are on a clock and need to finish this game ASAP. Problem is, they have nothing to break buildings. I mean, they don't. They need to win a fight and probably wipe out the enemy team before they open more objectives. If managed to do it once, not in a specific manner, uh, let's see if they can do it again. I guess the Shirdzins are probably going to just wait for Rota number two. Yeah, that has to be the game plan here and if anything they're going to need a few more BKBs. You can see the Monkey King making progress towards his own BKB but I actually am in, I'm in favour of a BKB for Mamacita on that Ember Spirit as well this game. Uh, he's kept the, que the Lincoln Sphere queued up which honestly I think is a bad idea. Yeah, I'd like to see BKB. Even the DA on the other side is going to benefit hugely from the BKB to some extent. All that control coming up from the Ember Spirit, which is uh, many magical damage, won't be doing too much because of the DA being some of the KB. 11. I mean, uh, this is not good. Not a damage, he's just gonna sit back. Slow, painful, but a kill nonetheless. And 43 seconds without any disruption. I mean, you've got to go and make plays like this, right? Because you know that Sherdils are going to be looking for a pickoff some way or the other. And, I mean, you'd rather have your Disruptor being sacrificed as opposed to one of your cores being sacrificed elsewhere. But uh, he's back in 20 seconds. This isn't really incentive for Sherdils to push the bottom lane and take barracks. They should still just stick to their original plan of waiting it out and going for that next Aegis before pushing up onto the high ground. Bina Aegis, it's going to be so difficult for Sherdils because they have the propensity to throw. They're not showing the experience or the caliber that most high tier teams tend to show in the Southeast Asian circuit. Um, if, if, they were to able to, if they were able to control their urges and manage to play disciplined Dora, that's when you start counting them among the greats. But for now, they've still got a lot of work to do despite looking like they're going to win this game convincingly. Rival, they're going to work in the tier 3. 
Rival now has that BKB that pointed outside that Golden Star is going to go for the Ron's waiting for the target Who's he going to go for? He's got the central assassin Is there any call of damage? Ron's got the BKB Ron needs to now use the move on the command He's going to have to the strike And eventually but slowly brought down Sean he goes in with the blade shooting but it's good for nothing But the Ops is going to have to come in for the month He let him want to get hammered There's the Echo Slam He's Sean Totem Jeff bots down Deja Wu Deja Wu fights back his panic But Ryan who's on an outfit Give that man a rampage, give Samuel some lane of panic, but Sean Lee can only try, and he's gonna try and gain hard to throw the bonus that Sean Lee pops the JP, he's not really connecting on anyone, he's moving towards the end of an effort, he's clicked away, he's well, he's an ultimate rival, gets the rampage, and moving on, double rampage, GG, what game is wrong, the monster game is too strong, no wonder Hanuman is a god, and rival shows that he's not as well. Absolutely fantastic stuff coming out from Shane Bills. Unmitigated disaster for your dog. The gameplay is finished and there was a tie between the Yodhas and the Shadevils. I mean it's fair to say, both the teams were equally matched up and they played with all their heart. That's so true and I think despite what's happening on the leaderboards, both the teams earned each other's respect which in esports is a huge deal. And tomorrow you guys are in for a treat because two new teams are going to battle it out against each other, the Crusaders versus the Akramaks. You will get to watch all this epic action at the same place, same time on You Cypher, Naya Sport, Naya Superstars. My name is Aisha. And I'm Varun. Signing, Signing out. out.